So what is the OAuth authorization called grant and why is it useful and why do you need it? Okay, let's just recall what OAuth is for one second. So the goal of OAuth is to give a third party application limited access to an API either on behalf of a user or on behalf of itself as a service account, so to say. And this authorization called Flow targets the first use case we talked about, which is giving a third party application limited access on behalf of a user, right? So the idea here is that we have a third party application. It wants to access this API, uh, but we don't want to share like the credentials. And the idea here is that OAuth introduces an authorization server, which issues tokens. And with this token, this application can get limited access to this API. Yeah, so the question is, how do you actually get this uh, token from the authorization server over to the third party application without, you know, making direct calls and so on, because you don't want to enter the username and the password. And this is exactly what the authorization code grant is about. So it allows the third party application to get a token without the user having to enter like the credentials over here. So let's go through this step by step. When you like, create an OAuth application, you need to register them first. So I just took like Google as an example because it's just so common. So you go to this developer console, um, you upload like a logo, you add the description and you register some redirect URLs and you also get a client ID and a client secret. So the client ID uniquely identifies your application. And the client secret is something that you only get if you have a confidential client. So confidential client is a client that is able to keep something secret. So a single page application like React would not be confidential because you can just open like the developer console and you can just take a look at the code. And the same for like a mobile app. So these two would be public clients. Uh, but like an application that is rendered on the server side is considered a confidential client. And in that case, you would get a client secret as well. So typically in the setup process, it asks you what type of application you want to build. And then if it's confidential, then you also get a client secret. Yeah, so you kind of do this upfront. One more note here, there's also um, like efforts in, the, in this OAuth working group that you can register these things dynamically. So there's already an RFC for that because it's kind of annoying, right? If you have a lot of applications, you need to do that for every single one of them. Maybe you want to do it dynamically. Okay, so you register this application and now the question is how do you get access to the Google Drive API? And the way this works is you go to this uh, website here, diagrams.net, and you make some button which says login with Google. And then if you click this button, you redirect to the authorization server. So this is important. So the URL changes from diagrams.net to accounts.google.com or whatever provider you use. And in this, or like with this redirect, you have like a couple of query parameters, which we are going to talk about like in a second, like on the details. But essentially you need to provide like the client ID, which identifies your application so this is not considered secret or anything uh, a redirect url we're going to see in a second why you need that scopes so OAuth is about giving limited access to api so you could for example say okay i only want read only access which would not make sense with this application right because it needs to save a file but technically speaking you could and then there's a few other parameters that uh, are mainly there for uh, security so we will talk about state and pixie in a second cool so you you go here you get redirected you add a couple of query parameters your client id and so on and then on this website you actually enter your credentials and this is important so you only enter your google account credentials at a google service which makes a lot of sense right so once you have entered like the credentials the service says yeah okay i know who you are and then it says, hey, look, there's like this application. Uh, it's called diagrams.net and it displays the logo and the text you have registered before. And this thing would like to access or this thing would like to do the following things. One, two, three, four, five. Do you want to allow that? And then you can say yes or no. And if you say yes, then Google says, okay, well, you allowed 
or you gave this uh, application access to your API. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you back to the application that requested it, right? Because that's why you're here in the first place, to use this third-party application. So you get redirected to this redirect URL. And now you also know why you have this application here, in uh, this URL here in the first place, right? Because how else would you communicate additional information? You need to pass this redirect URL in the, um, like in the address bar. Yeah, one more thing is for security reasons, this uh, server like will only redirect you to redirect URLs you have registered before. It's just a security, security thing. Otherwise, this whole process would be like vulnerable. And the working group also recommends to do like exact string matching for the redirect URL. So no wildcards or anything because there's different types of attacks for it. Except on mobile, there it shouldn't be except it shouldn't be exact string matching. Uh, it should be or you should use exact string matching except for the port. But that's like some detail. Okay. So here the example is like a single page application. Let's say this is successful. So you get redirected back. And what do you actually get? So now you're back to the initial application and now you get two things. So you get like the code and you get state. So we're going to talk about state in a second. So it's like a security feature. Um, but the thing that is actually relevant is the code. And what you now do is you take this code, you make a request to this authorization server and say, hey, look, um, like this user performed authentication and said, yes, I received this code here, which is like a random string that is like only valid for a short amount of time. Uh, can you please give me an access token? And then you send a couple of other parameters uh, with it. We will talk about them in, in a second as well. So you take that stuff, you send it to the authorization server, the server checks, oh yeah, okay, I know this code. It matches the client ID. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I know the scopes. Okay, cool. Here's like the access token. Sometimes you also get back, um, or depending on what the application asks for, you also get back a refresh token because these access token, they expire for security reasons. And sometimes you also want to get back a refresh token. So if the access token is expired, you can re use the refresh token to uh, get a new access token. And obviously refresh token can also expire and refresh tokens can also be revoked. The challenge here is always how do you keep them secret? So it's kind of difficult in a, uh, like in a browser or yeah, on a mobile app, it's a little bit easier, but in a browser, it's a little bit more difficult. Okay, and now you got your access token. And now that you have this access token, so here you can actually go and make API requests. And that's the whole flow more or less. Okay, so on a high level is you start at the third party application. It redirects you to this authorization server. Authorization server says, hey, do you really want to allow that? Or well, first of all, you log in and then it asks you, do you really want to allow that? If you say yes, you get redirected to where you came from or not where you came from, but to the third party application uh, with like this code. And then you exchange this code for an access token. That's how OAuth, the authorization code grant works on a high level. And there's a few things here that we haven't talked about. So for example, state, uh, state is like a security or was introduced as a security feature to protect against cross-site request forgery. So Technically speaking, let's assume there's like an evil attacker. And let's say this attacker like starts this flow on its own, gets an authorization code, and then is able to inject like the attacker's authorization code inside of my flow. Because I don't know, there's maybe some browser extension, some evil browser extension or something, something like that. Then if this application makes like an API request, you would actually get an access token for the attacker's Google Drive, right? So I would take my file and upload it to the uh, like Google Drive of the attacker. And that's why you have this state parameter. So the state parameter is just some random value the application makes up. And um, before you redirect, you kind of store this somewhere, so in memory typically. And then when you get redirected, you check, okay, um, is the state that I get back the same uh, is is well is this value here the same like the one I sent before and that makes sure that the same application that initiated the flow is also the one that gets the access token 
Now, this doesn't protect against all types of attack vectors. Um, these days, there's like better ways on how you can do it. It's called Pixie. But this would like make the scope too big for this video. So I'm going to make a separate video on Pixie on what it is. Yeah, so let's quickly talk about this uh, authorization code flow for server-side rendered applications. In principle, it's exactly the same. So you are on this application, you log in, or you get redirected, and then you log in, and then you get back the code. The difference here is that your backend is actually exchanging the code for an access token. And since this is a confidential client, so it can keep a secret secret, you also need to send the client secret in addition to the client ID and the code to the authorization server. And this is nice because even if someone somehow manages to steal this code, which is not that unlikely, right? I mean, after all, it's just in the URL. There's like many ways on how you can uh, attempt to steal this. Like, even if you manage to steal this authorization code, like you still cannot exchange it for an access token because you don't have the client secret. So that's like one of the advantages, so to say, for server-side rendered apps. Yeah, so that's it pretty much for this authorization code flow. Yeah, let me know what you think about this. Uh, do you have any questions Questions on that? Was the explanation clear? Just leave me a comment below. If you have any other questions, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Production Coder. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I think we will just continue with like the other flows. And I think I'm also going to explain Pixie in more detail. So stay tuned. If you want to know about OAuth, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.